Any health-related information on the following show provides general information only. Content presented on any show by any host or guest should not be substituted for a doctor's advice. Always consult your physician before beginning any new diet, exercise, or treatment program. Welcome to Accelerated Health TV and Radio Show. I'm your host, Sarah Banta. I'm a health coach, natural supplement expert, and a busy mom of three. Make sure you hit the subscribe button below so you're notified every week with my new podcast Mondays and Tuesdays. And if you haven't already, join my free group coaching on Telegram with the link below. There's no downside. I teach you on a daily basis with tips and tools to enhance your health and you will be a part of a like-minded group to support you on your journey in addition to truly taking control of your health. The protocols and supplements I discuss are all found at sarahbantahealth.com. Today, I'm so excited because our guest literally compliments everything that I do and what then I can't give to you. And that is food and how to cook and made it make it taste really good. I being a busy mom of three, I've got to make sure my food is from prep onto the table within 30 minutes. Whitney Aronoff is a health supportive personal chef in Laguna Beach in my backyard, passionate about wellness, the vibration of food, and supporting others in living their best life. She's attended Culinary School of the Nature, a natural gourmet institute in New York City, and went on to work to at farm to table restaurants in New York and Newport Beach. Welcome, Whitney. How are you today? I'm wonderful. So happy to be with you and this amazing community. I am too. And it, and anyone who watches me and listens to me knows I'm all about frequency, increasing your frequency, increasing your vibration. So now we're talking about foods with vibration. But first, why don't you give people a little background as to why you got into this and what led you on this journey? Absolutely. Well, I got into this because I wanted to learn how to heal myself with food. So starting at a young age when I was in high school, every night after dinner, I would start to get stomach aches and just stomach aches and pain, super deep pains in my stomach. And I felt like I tried everything. I went to like my general practitioner. I, you know, took Pepto-Bismo. I looked and studied and tried to figure out how to eat healthier and nothing was helping me. And as I got older, the stomach pains got worse. And I went to more and more practitioners throughout the country as I learned more. And I was never able to get to the root cause of my problem. And I just finally woke up one day and realized, you know, I'm in this body. I can feel it all. I have the power and I know I can get the training and have the ability to heal myself with food. If I learn the traditional preparation methods, maybe learning about new foods that I'm not eating in my diet, I want to learn how to do it all myself. Um, and so that's what I did. I found the natural gourmet Institute and it changed my life. And I wanted to then share what I learned because I just felt like learning how to fuel yourself with food, learning about traditional foods, learning how to prepare food properly is something that we all deserve to know. I felt like it was finishing school for life. So I don't think everyone has time to put six to seven months of their life on hold, go to culinary school every day and learn about traditional food, health and wellness. Um, these are tools that everyone deserves to have for free. And that's what I'm trying to do. Just teach what I learned, traditional information that um, that is out there. Just, you know, we all deserve to have it. And, you know, it's so it's so much more important now than ever, because we go to the grocery store and the food is dead. And where are our foods coming from? Even the organic crops are getting overspray of GMOs. And it, it's just, it's a, a, we are salmon swimming upstream when it comes to feeding our bodies with good food. And then that also gets into your praying practice or, or blessing food or 
you know, how you view your food when you when you sit down and eat it, which we'll get into in a little bit. But why don't we start with what is high vibration? What does that mean? What is high vibration as it relates to food? Yeah, so there's only two energies on the planet. There's an up spiral energy and a down spiral energy. And I think we all know when we've been at a time in our lives, when we've been up spiral and when we've been down spiral, down spiral is your typical sad, depressed. I don't want to get out of bed. Nothing's going my way. And then you start attracting more of that towards you. Then up spiral is joy, happiness, feeling good, pep in your step everything's going my way. I attract love, abundance, everything that I want. I flow with life with ease and grace. So there's two strong, distinct energies on the planet. We can see that with our food. You and I can tap into that really easily. For other people, they're just at a place where it's not as clear to them, but you know, everyone, everyone has the power to move in this direction. So high vibration food is life force energy is food that's going to transfer energy to us and into us. So fruits, vegetables, you know, more focused high vibration food like bee pollen, raw local honeys, you know, certain meats, certain organ meats. Those are high vibration foods. Low vibration food, you can just simply think about life force energy and what is void of life force energy, something that has, you know, an expiration date that allows it to sit on the shelf for five years, you know, any packaged food, highly preservative food. If you can turn over the ingredients and you can't pronounce what's in the package, that would be low vibration food and food that is just not worth eating because it's not going to transfer any positivity, any energy to you. Um, The whole concept of life force and chi and Chinese medicine, it's that it's that circulation. If you can't if you've never heard of that or haven't connected to it, think about the the circulation in your body moving the days where everything just feels stagnant and stuck versus the days where um, things are moving. And Whitney, we were talking about lymphatic drainage before we got on the lymph right? And, and that's yeah. part of life force. So all of these um, more guru type terms actually have some physical aspect to it. And when you look at a McDonald's hamburger and you leave it on the counter for over a year, it's going to look the same in 365 days because it's not real food. Food is supposed to nurture our body our body's then supposed to assimilate it, break it down, use it in all the proper ways. Um, and if it's dead, you're just, what are you giving your body? You're giving your body acidity. You're giving your body some things that probably are going to cause leaky gut, causing um, malnutrition, uh, 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 inflammatory responses throughout the body. So there's all of these other things that are happening. Um, so it's not just this whole voodoo concept of live versus dead food, high versus low vibration. There's something to it. I heard you talk about carrots and how they're grounding because they're root vegetables. And I never really thought of it that way. So why don't you talk about some of those things in foods with to match how you're feeling? Yeah. So now that we've you know, identified high vibration and low vibration foods, you can then understand the type of energy that you're going to get when you choose certain foods. So if you look at the seasons as well, that can help you. So if you look at what's available in the fall, winter, early spring, a lot of it is is root vegetables. So if you imagine a farm, imagine all the vegetables that are growing into the earth, into the soil, and that would be carrots, rutabagas, beets, turnips, they're all moving down into the ground. So therefore you're going to get that, that feeling of life force energy, that rooted, grounded feeling. And then if you also think of proteins, so, you know, a lot of people don't think about the animal and how the animal's living and how that's transferring a certain amount of energy to you. So if you think about 
a chicken or a lamb, think about those thighs that are moving and mobilizing that animal around. And it's having to hold up a pretty big body and constantly move that animal around so it can graze and feed. And so the most life force energy in the animal protein is actually going to be the dark meat because it worked the hardest. So if you really want energy, you want to go for the dark meat. If you don't want as much energy, you go for the white meat and the white meat is where the animal hasn't moved a lot. So let's take the chicken. Mm -hmm. So the dark meat is going to be on the thighs and the legs. So, cause that is the part of the chicken that worked the hardest. So it therefore holds the most energy. If you look at the chicken breast, which is the traditional white meat that we've all been sold as the cut that you're supposed to eat in order to be skinny and healthy, that breast just kind of sits on that chicken. You know, that part of the chicken doesn't move that much. It's not exerting a lot of energy, you know, mm -hmm. just like any man or woman can look at its own breasts and it's not doing that much. It's not, it's not providing energy or working towards moving you throughout the day. So therefore, you know, there's not going to be much life force energy in that section of the animal. You could even take animals in the wild and look at what section they go for first. They usually go for the organ meats first mm -hmm. and then the dark meats and then the light meats last. So the same should go for us. We're going for life force energy. So we want to eat the organ meats and the dark meat first. You know, the white meat is really leftovers and we're really eating for energy, you know, then we're eating for joy and experience and company and ceremony and everything after that. But if you're looking to feel better, just think about where your energy is really coming from. Look at the way the animal lived or the plant grew, and that'll give you some idea of the type of energy you're transferring into your body. I love that you're bringing up anim uh, the animals versus the wild animals. And I and want to emphasize this. So let's just take a step back and say, look at how was that animal raised? If it was in a crowded um, cage, conventional style, like most chicken and poultry and conventional beef are, they're stressed out. So what's happening also in their in their body and their proteins, they be, are becoming these amyloid proteins that I've been talking a lot about. And now, unfortunately, not the chicken's fault, but it, they have these amyloid proteins that then get deposited in our brain for Alzheimer's and dementia. They can't get broken down by the liver to be used as a usable amino acids. And I'm actually going to be talking uh, to a uh, uh, pod, on a podcast about the wrong proteins to eat for building muscle. Well, if you're eating these amyloid proteins from chickens that have been stressed out in these crowded environments, this is dead. This is this is stressed out meat, right? So uh, aside from the amyloid proteins, these chickens are stressed. So what type of energy are you taking in when you're eating that stressed animal, right? Um, versus a bison that has been roaming freely and eating grass that is organic and wild and he's lean because he's been running and, and needing to move and, and not just in crowded spaces. Um, versus and the wild salmon that's swimming in wild um, oceans versus the ones that are farm raised. You have to think about the brain of the animal and the stress. What does stress do to us? Raises cortisol, raises the wrong fats, raises the inflammation in the body. So all of that is being transferred to you. So it's not what you eat. It's also what you eat ate. And the conditions that animal was living under. So I just wanted to emphasize that too, because not just the body part of the animal that you're 
that you're consuming. And I, I used to, high school, I remember Thanksgiving, I went for the white turkey meat, the white turkey meat. And then I learned more of what you're talking about, Whitney. And then I actually realized the dark meat tasted better anyway. Yes. So it, it, right? It was super, it was just this nice um, double win for me. Um, but let's talk about, you talk about the four bodies. Yeah. Um, so what about food nourishing the four bodies? Can you discuss that a bit? Yeah. So we have four bodies. Some people can see them. Some people can't, but just because you can't see them doesn't mean it doesn't exist. So we have our physical body, which we're all more, most aware of physical body, emotional body, spiritual body, and etheric body. And it's time that everyone starts to understand this because sometimes we have things going on in one of our other bodies that is affecting our health in real life, in real time. So people can have physical aches and pains and things happening to them, rashes, all different things that are actually starting from their spiritual body. So past life things acting up, bloodline things acting up, um, childhood trauma acting up. There's so much going on to our amazing, complicated, multidimensional beings. So not everyone is at a place where they're ready to be aware of their four bodies and take action on exploring those and healing those. But most people want to feel good in what they can see, which is their physical body. So it's time that people start approaching their diet and their food choices to build the foundation for a physical healthy body, which will bleed into those other bodies, just as those other bodies bleed into this one. And your food is your foundation. You're like a structure. You're like a building. No building just pops up. Someone has to come in and be the structural engineer and lay the foundation. So your food is that foundation. When you get your diet right, everything else in your life will fall perfectly into place. And then your other bodies are going to feel better and it's going to bleed into that. So maybe that'll mean it'll strengthen your intuition. You'll be able to better follow your gut feelings. Maybe there'll be a better mind body connection. Maybe your third eye will open up a little bit more. Um, maybe you'll just have more clarity on the life you want to be living, the career you want to be having. Um, but they're all connected to each other. And by choosing real food, it's going to support everything. When we are loaded with toxins, our brain is dumbed down. Our third eye, our pineal gland is calcified and the brain fog just puts us in a fog and we just are numb to the world. Yes. And once you start opening that up, start detoxing, start nurturing your body. It's not just what you're eating, but it's what you're not eating, getting all the processed foods and the sugars that are inflammatory, inflaming the brain, inflaming the body. You then get more in tune with your body. And anyone, as an example, anyone who drinks alcohol on a daily basis and says, well, it's not affecting them, and then quits for a month, and then takes their first drink again, and wakes up that next morning goes, oh my god, I feel like I've been hit by a truck. Well, you were being hit by a truck on a daily basis, but you didn't know it, it because you were so numb to the true feelings of your body. And when you start cleaning things up, cleaning up your diet, detoxing, you get those bodies in alignment and you are more in tune. And an example of what Whitney's talking about is this weekend is I was, um, you know, I've got a, a friend of mine with a son that's 20 years old with cancer. And I'm very in tune with people. And I was really, I was really nauseous. It was really nauseous. He's going through chemo. It stirred up a lot of emotions in me. And, but physically, I was nauseous to the point where I had a hard time eating. I was also retaining a lot of water and I was bloated. And it wasn't necessarily anything that was happening in my body. Mm 
So Whitney, I want you to dive a little deeper into this because what we're touching on, some people are like, I, I kind of understand, but talk more about the spiritual and the etheric body and how they really are intertwined with the physical and the emotional. So I suffer from the same condition you do. So I work as a sponge, whether I'm conscious of it or not, and I absorb other people's issues. And essentially my spiritual body tries to take and remove people's health issues from theirs and process it and move it out. However, it then makes me extremely swollen, um, extremely puffy, and I know it's nothing I ain't. And I know it's no chemicals that I've been exposed to. I know it's not toxic cleaning supplies in my home or anything of that sort, because I've taken care of moving all that out of my life. But my emotional body and my spiritual body will pick up on something that's wrong with a client or a friend or somebody that I'm interacting with. And it will try to transmute that energy for them. And most of us, know that this happens for people that are hands-on healers or shamans or people that work in that world, but it can happen to the regular everyday person that's not aware of who they are at a deeper spiritual or metaphysical, in a metaphysical way. Um, and if you are having problems with inflammation, and you've tried everything, the doctors, the health coaches, the supplements, the elimination diets, the saunas, the lymphatic drainage, all of that. And these things are happening. It might be the other bodies and might be the spiritual and etheric bodies. And maybe it's time that you need to start finding a coach to tap into who you are at other levels and what's happening with those bodies to heal them and learn protection methods so you aren't absorbing other people's stuff anymore. Or it just means that you now have to, on top of everything that you're doing for your physical health and diet, you need to pick up some spiritual practices when you get home. You need to sage yourself, sage your kitchen, sage, sage your home of negative energy and psychic debris. You need to take salt baths not necessarily with the intention of, oh, I'm absorbing all this fabulous magnesium for my body. I'm getting rid of aches and pains. But what you're also doing is you're clearing yourself energetically. You are getting off anybody else's stuff from the day. You are clearing yourself of all negative energy and psychic debris. So sometimes we're doing these things, but more intention is required to better support you in protecting yourself healing yourself, cleaning and clearing yourself. And, you know, you might have heard this before, this might be new to you, but consider this a head start. Because as we keep moving through this new Aquarian age, this is going to become bigger and bigger. More people are going to start waking up to the fact that they have four bodies, that they're multidimensional, that this isn't their first time having a life and they're going to be more sensitive to other people. And so we all have to start learning these techniques that don't just support our physical bodies, that support all the layers of us. Um, and then you're going to start feeling a lot better too. And you're going to start looking a lot better. And I think, you know, that's why we all tune into podcasts like this, because we want to feel good. We want to look good. We want to live a great life. Um, but it just means there might be just a few extra routines that you need to start adding in in the morning or in the evening. I love the word intention that you use because regardless of what you're doing, when you put a t intention to it, the benefits from it significantly rise. And I'll take the example, if, if everyone's listening going, I, I don't know what, I don't really connect with what Whitney's saying, or maybe I kind of do. Think about the guys in the gym 
that are looking at themselves and taking selfies. And the mirrors are there not just for um, just to boost egos, but it's actually for intention. It has been proven that if you're watching yourself lifting weights and you are looking at that bicep and focusing on it getting bigger, it's actually going to get bigger. So adding that intention is, is really reinforcing the brain to say, I'm sending ATP and muscle building fibers to my bicep as I'm lifting, as I'm looking at myself, as I'm taking my selfie. Do I promote taking selfies in the gym? No, but I'm just saying that this is why it works. And Whitney, I every day, as we were talking about before coming on, what are you going to do after this? I'm going to do some self-care. You're going to do some self-care. At the end of my workday, I take a bath. And it's almost this triggering of Sarah out of the entrepreneur, business owner mindset into wife, cooking for my family, becoming the mom. And it's that that downturn of energy when I go to when I wake up in the morning and I am ready to work out. What I do is I always put my hat on ever since sixth grade. I've always exercised with a hat on for whatever reason. So what that is for me now, it's a trigger. It's an intention. It's changing the focus. Once that hat's on, I know it's time to go work out. It's time to get the most out of whatever I'm going to do, whatever activity is. And it's with intention, going to bed with intention of good sleep. How are you going to change your thoughts to be uh, positive and not negative during the day? That's with intention. I love that because I do that in my job. And if people are having a hard time, you know, showing up every day and performing at work, the uniform you put on, whether it's work or any activity in life, you can choose one that lights you up and switches your brain so you get in that mode. So that happens to me every time I put on my chef's jacket or put on my apron. And there's only one brand of apron I use, Headley and Bennett. And when I do either one of those, it switches my brain into chef mode, whether I'm cooking at home, recipe testing for a brand or cooking for my clients. It makes me fast, efficient, smart, tuned in. And, you know, I execute with ease versus when I don't have either piece of my uniform on, I can fumble a little bit more. I can get distracted. Um, it's amazing how the brain works and we can use that tool for all different things that we do in life. I love that. Well, back to food. I want to talk about raw food versus cooked food because you hear all of the vegans or the raw vegan diet. Um, I'll never forget going to a raw vegan restaurant and two things came out from that. Um, good food because they were chefs, obviously. I left bloated and then I was hungry. So the, the raw food thing didn't work for me, but I would love to hear why raw food isn't better than the cooked food and why that theory is wrong. So as I teach people about high vibration foods, they often think that I'm referring to a vegan diet, a vegetarian diet, or a raw diet. And everyone has to figure out the foods that work best for them. But I think what's most important is that people learn that it's not a diet, that Balance is key and balance for what works for your body with where you are right now is key. And I think a lot of women go through a hard time trying to find what works for them and that's going to keep them healthy and skinny. And so they'll often fall into the vegan, vegetarian and raw trap because they think it's going to make them skinny. Now, prior, you know, despite what a lot of people think, we've been cooking our food for a really long time. And there's a reason for that. Cooking the food prepares our food for digestion. It allows us to break down the food. And when food is heated, you get different nutrient benefits than if it was raw. And oftentimes, you know, there's been many studies out there that you can look up. If you take a carrot 
what you're going to get when you eat a raw carrot is very different than what you're going to get when you cook the carrot, when you break down the cellular wall of that carrot so you can more easily digest it, you're then going to be able to assimilate more of the beta carotene and other minerals and vitamins within the carrot. Now, we are all from different backgrounds around the world. And there's also been lots of studies done that people of European descent don't assimilate nutrients and vitamins from raw food as well as people of other descent. So variety is not just the spice of life when it comes to the foods that you're eating, but your cooking techniques. And, you know, I think a lot of people think, gosh, if I just had a smoothie every day and a big kale salad for lunch, you know, and a raw wrap at dinner, I'd be healthy, I'd be skinny, I'd be pretty. And that would be really hard on your digestive system and your body. You'd be spending a lot more time sending your energy to your stomach, trying to break down that food because most of that wasn't even prepared properly. So a lot of people like to grab a bunch of nuts and just snack on them, forgetting that nuts are a food that's been essentially dehydrated and you need to activate it by soaking it with water again, just like rice. Like a lot of people think they can just buy three minute microwavable rice and they can just have that for dinner with a bunch of other things. But rice was a living thing that got dried out and tons of hands touched it. It went on different floors all over the place. It finally got shipped to your grocery store. You picked it up. You have to wash that rice really well. And then you have to soak it and reactivate it. And then you can cook it. And now it's full of life force energy again. But there's a real importance in learning traditional cooking techniques and eating the food the way it's going to best support you. So if you're going to eat leafy greens, you know, you're going to soak them and, and wash them and cook them in a lot of liquid. Like you're not going to have a raw collard greens wrap you're going to make slow cooked collard greens and you're going to cook them for an hour and a half because that breaks down its cellular wall. So you can absorb the nutrients and digest it properly. And also that the elements of the collard greens that don't serve you and your body doesn't like that, that cooks off and disappears. Mm -hmm. um, you know, that, 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 you know, kale, you know, is going to serve you a lot better if it's really washed well deeply cooked, slow cooked. And again, it's maybe not one of the foods that's meant for you every single day. So it's, I think a lot of people have a lot to learn about food and that's okay because nobody taught them properly. Most people are learning from magazines, online blogs, social media. Um, but Raw food was created in the 1970s as a movement and program to get people to start eating vegetables again. It wasn't a diet. It wasn't a lifestyle. It was literally something that was created in order to get people to start eating fresh fruits and vegetables again, because even at that time, people were really leaving, leaning heavily towards processed foods, towards soda, towards tab, you know towards all this more junk food. That's when it was really coming, coming up and people were noticing an issue. So it's, it's not, it's not high vibration food. It's just food and it's not meant to always be eaten that way. I, I love that. And not that we're against eating some raw vegetables and raw foods, but um, it's not just a one way and that's it. I want to talk about spices and how they enhance food. Are there nutritional benefits or is it just for taste? You have created some spices with your company and they're high vibrational. And I also want to discuss what does that mean? Yeah. So I have my own line of organic spice blends called Starseed Kitchen. And they're the actual spice blends that my family and I have been making from scratch since the 90s. For about 25 years, we've been doing these blends at home with organic spices and real sea salt. And when I started working as a chef, I used these on my clients because 
That way there's no sugar in them. There's no caking agents. There's no MSG. There's no color additives. There's none of the junk that you often see on the back of spice containers. And I use real salt as well, which is super helpful because we know we get so many minerals and we hydrate by using salt. And it's also a flavor enhancer. But spices are superfoods. So if you imagine cilantro and a ton of cilantro growing in a field, you know, maybe it's only available in one part of the world during one time. So you eat it while it's fresh, but then you take all that leftover cilantro, you dry it, you ground it. And now you have ground coriander and now you have that in your community to use the rest of the time of year when cilantro is not available. So spices have been a traditional way that we've been using these herbs and spices throughout the seasons when the fresh version is not available. Mm. And it's again, the concentrated version of the fresh version. So it's still full of life force energy. It's full of flavor. It's supposed to be used within one to two years after you grind it. But then it's not just flavoring your food, it's digestive support. It's providing and creating digestive fire, which is a term that's mostly used in India and Ayurvedic medicine. It's going to help you digest your food better. And when you enjoy your meal, you're going to chew it more. You're going to be in a better mindset when you're eating it. You're going to be happier. It's going to create for a better assimilation in your body. Um, and, you know, life, food is to be enjoyed. You know, that's one of the pleasures of being human and getting to eat. Food is to be enjoyed. So season your food, but season your food properly and knowing that it's not the cheapest thing that's on the shelf. It's the best quality that you're looking for. We, we have a few more moments and I want to make sure we, we touch on, we touched on intention, but when you are eating food with the intention, with the blessing and how you view the food, I, so many people have eating disorders, right? Or disordered eating and disordered views of food. How to, how do we correct that? How do we correct our relationship with food and view it more as a blessing, as a, a nurturing our body, all of all four of our bodies? I completely agree with you. We need to spend a little bit a little bit more time having gratitude for every meal that we get because we're so lucky. It's so easy to eat these days. It's so much more available than it used to be, then it's not as time consuming as it used to be. So if you don't understand what I'm saying, I highly suggest just watch some period piece movies and just see the scenes that they show in movies about what it's taking for them to put a meal on the table. A movie that I love is called Delicious. I believe it came out just a year or two ago and it talks kind of about how the first restaurant was created in France. And that, that way you can see how hard it was to put food on the table for every meal. So with that in mind, whatever you prepare yourself or someone prepares for you, just give gratitude because it might not always be done in the way that you would have liked it done. You especially have to surrender to that when you travel. So that's when you just take a moment and give gratitude for your food. And sometimes, you know, you can talk to your food, you know, you can tell it, you know, that, you want to be able to assimilate it and digest it well, that you're grateful for it, that you appreciate the transfer of energy. You know, sometimes if you just don't want to take a moment to say anything or feel anything or have an intention, just put your hands around your plate. Just, just put your hands around the plate or the bowl for a minute. Maybe imagine some light, yellow or white light from your hands, just going straight into the food. And then that'll get transferred to you. Just if you don't want to focus on the food because you're having some food fear, then just focus on the company that you're with and just give thanks to sitting at a table with your friends. Just do a quick cheers to say, hey, happy to have us all together. Cheers. That creates an energy that's right above you guys, which will naturally fall into your food, which will then, you know, 
then help you have a better meal. I think we all know that when we're around good company and people that uplift us and bring us joy, doesn't matter how good the food is, we'll usually end up eating less because Mm -hmm. we are absorbing life force energy from the joy that we're creating with everybody we're around. Um, And the food ultimately just becomes like, you know, the icing on the cake, so to say. Um, But if you also find the concept of blessing food uncomfortable, then play good music play music that brings you joy, explore the variety of Hertz frequencies out there that can benefit the food and benefit you play a Kundalini mantra, play more Yogi music, play classical music, but the frequency as well can affect the frequency of the food you're going to eat because that food is filled with water and all the studies are out there for you to explore how music and sound vibration affects water it's going to do the same to your food because that water is in your food. I love that. And that is essentially what the scalar frequencies are when I talk about some of my supplements, that those frequencies are healing frequencies in the water because water memorizes frequencies. So I love that you touched on that. And we all know that, you know, People like you and me may be on very specific diets where we don't eat certain foods, but if we go to a restaurant or a friend's home and we're served this food, if you look at it with um, the intention that it's going to nourish your body, it's probably not going to have a negative effect on your body as you think it might versus when you're driving down the 405 freeway, stressed out and eating an organic protein bar, that bar might be dead and actually do more damage to your gut than eating the wrong foods on your plate that was made with love by your friend or family member um, giving you giving you some love. So Whitney, I loved having you on. I love this discussion. Where can people find you for your amazing cooking um, tips and also your spices and everything that you do? Thank you. Well, you guys can visit the website Starseed Kitchen, starseedkitchen.com. And you can use the code Starseed to get a discount on any spices you order. And you can also get all the recipes there that I create for my personal chef client. So you can cook healthy, high vibration meals at home. You can also listen to more conversations like this on my podcast, the High Vibration Living Podcast on iTunes, Spotify, iHeartRadio, wherever you listen to your podcast. And then if you want to cook with me, which I would love for you to join me in the kitchen, I am doing an online cooking class April 27th. You can visit the website, join Tiny Kitchen, and you can sign up for the Tiny Kitchen Cooking Club cooking lesson with me. I'd love to see you guys then. Awesome. Thank you so much, Whitney, for joining us. And now I wanted to talk about some supplements that are all scalar enhanced with frequencies, just like Whitney was talking about, and that support digestion, support the health of what you are nourishing your body with. And the number one is the accelerated cellular detox powder. Why is this formula so amazing? It's organic, It's six ingredients. It's the only one out there that does this. Um, It coats the stomach and the intestinal lining, reduces inflammation, helps with bloat and regularity, alleviates issues like Crohn's disease and colitis. I was on the verge of Crohn's disease at my rock bottom. So this accelerated cellular detox powder is literally the gut superhero. And it soaks up all those toxins that you maybe uh, have been hit with during the day, maybe eight some foods that didn't agree with you that can cause unexplained weight gain or inflammation throughout the body. And it helps with the bloat and the water retention that you may be suffering from. The accelerated silver, accelerated scalar silver is the foundation of this company. It turned my son's health around when he was nine years old and um, diagnosed with leukemia. It has its ability to devitalize foreign pathogens, including those that contribute 
to a leaky gut, to um, when you are suffering from the cold or flu. But when your immune system is fighting and attacking something over here, what else suffers? Your digestion, your thyroid health, your metabolism slows down. Your gut says, I'm not going to eat right now because I need to fight this virus over here. So when you take the accelerated silver, you keep your immune system strong. So these viruses and bacteria don't ever get a handle on your body. We call it bolly belly when, when, or food poisoning, right? When you are traveling and you, you have things coming out both ends. Well, the accelerated silver is known as the bolly belly um, savior because it helps with food poisoning and some of the some of the bacteria that can cause leaky gut and that sort of thing that is causing these issues of bloat and malnutrition. Now, a lot of you are listening to Whitney talk about eating healthy vibrational foods not eating the processed foods, the sugar foods, and you're thinking, well, yeah, that sounds great, but I crave it. Well, why are you craving it? Fungus and candida and all these foreign pathogens starve you and make those cravings because they need the sugar. Well, also, we've been running on glucose since we were babies, and it's time to tap into that other fuel system called ketones. The accelerated keto turns your body into ketosis or fat burning mode within 30 minutes. It taps into your own fat stores for energies right, energy right away. So why is this important? You all of a sudden say, I don't need that sugar and carbs. I've got plenty of fat to burn on my body. I'm going to shut down my appetite. Let's go do something fun. Let's go hike. Let's go work. Let's go do something with our brain as we're cleaning out the cobwebs in our brain, lowering the glucose in our brain and our body. We're also increasing ATP production. When your body's in ketosis, the, the ketones are actually causing ATP to increase by at least five times. That accelerated keto is increasing ATP and mitochondrial health. That means you have more energy in the body and the brain. That is your life force. That's your chi. That's what we are talking about. And the additional ingredients in the accelerated keto break down those saturated fats into unsaturated fats in the body. And this is going to help you burn that visceral dangerous fat, the belly fat, the liver fat that accumulates so easily, especially as we age. And the more your liver is defatted and unclogged, the easier it is for it to break down those fat molecules. Also, as our liver health improves, we're able to detox all of those toxins from the GMOs, from the non-organic foods, as much as we want to be intentional and eat organic food. All of the soils have been sprayed. All of the soils have GMOs in them, unfortunately. So our livers are working harder than ever to detox. And it's that tipping point of what little food is going to tip our liver to say, nope, I can't do anymore. Well, the liver is where the thyroid hormones convert from T4 to T3. So as the liver's functioning better, the thyroid's working better as well. So we need to keep our liver clean. The accelerated keto is going to help do that on a daily basis. And then you want to throw in a liver flush three to four times a year, maybe even four to five. Um, every time I do one, I feel my energy shoot through the roof. My skin feels better. My hair feels better. I can feel my digestion better. I'm never nauseous when I eat fat. Eating fat, if you're nauseous from eating too much fat, that's a sign that your liver's backed up. Acceleridine iodine, that increases ATP production by 18 times. That is going to help with your intracellular water, your, your hydration at the cellular level. It's going to increase metabolism, caloric burn. It's also opening that pineal gland, the third eye, as Whitney was talking about it. It increases that or opens it up so that you literally 
are letting go of toxicity. You are becoming more aware of your spiritual body and your etheric body as you are opening up and decalcifying your pineal gland. So the acceleridine is a major um, player in doing that. It's also increasing energy and fat oxidation. It's helping speed up the metabolism, helping with physical energy, which is going to encourage you to exercise more, gain more muscle, um, eat the proper foods. All of these things work together, work synergistically. And as the thyroid is working better because of the iodine, remember T4 and T3 stand for tyrosine and three and four molecules of iodine. So with Without iodine, our thyroid hormones aren't there. So those are just some of the supplements that will help support you in the food that you're eating and what you are doing for your body, mind, and spirit. And I want to thank, thank um, Whitney again and thank you all for joining me today. If I can help you with your health issues, you can contact me directly through the website, sarahbantahealth.com. Happy to put together a protocol for you. Join my free group coaching on Telegram with the link below. There's no downside. And leave a comment below. What did you learn? Did you have any questions for Whitney or me? We would love to answer them and share this with a few of your friends. I teach on a daily basis with my group coaching. There's no downside in not joining. The protocols and supplements I discussed are all on my website, sarahbantahealth.com. You can also follow me on Facebook and Instagram under Accelerated Health Products products and on a, uh, across over 100 channels, including YouTube, Stitcher, Pandora, iTunes, or whatever podcast platform you subscribe to. You can use a coupon, Welcome 10 for 10% off site-wide. Thanks again for joining us here on Accelerated Health TV and Radio Show and have a great week. Mm -hmm.